guys and welcome in this new video on the game engine theory now in the previous video we have been talking about game object so we implemented two classes we had an interface called i object and uh, we had a game object class which, which inherit from i object so all components that are going to be thrown on the screen uh, should inherit i mean all object in our game engine should inherit from game object now in this video we're gonna be starting um, a little bit with animation but for that we need to create our player so we're gonna be creating the character class which is gonna be the father class of the player actually because all character in a game uh, all players or enemies will inherit from character so that's the idea actually now in order for us to do that we need to create our new class so we're gonna be calling it character and we're gonna be saving this in a new folder called characters so it it's only a header file because it's gonna be an abstract class so just create it yes yes now the character will inherit from game object so we need to include game object we also need to set the inheritance here and since character inherit from game object which has a constructor with properties we also need to define those properties right here so that we can get all those information from game object so we have prop so we have to call the game object constructor and we pass these props to it so you could initialize those components that are in the game object class now we don't need this this structure right now we need to remove this private so we don't need it and uh, since this class is inheriting from game object which in return inherit from i object we need to either define or implement those three functions so the draw clean and update function that's why we need to define it and since the character class is an abstract class so we we won't implement them here we just define them now this is the basic character class now as as member we can have something like the name for example of the character so let us simply include this string so we're gonna be sticking with that for now only the name we're gonna be saying name So we'll add more, la more later for now we just stick with that now we need to create our player so we're gonna be calling it warrior because we can have different players we can have soldier warrior king or whatever so we're gonna be calling this one warrior so don't forget to start it in the character folder because we just want to organize the code like that but we can still start it wherever you want doesn't matter that's not important and in this case we, in this case we need the cpp file because we're going to be implementing a lot of function in this so don't forget to check that out so now the warrior should inherit from character so we need to include it character and we say public character and we also need to define the constructor so zip props and we call the character constructor right here and we give this prop to it so that it could be initialized now i think it's better for us to define this in, in the cpp file because it will be or uh, it will have more sense because we're going to be writing more than just defining or just calling that software um, Structure. so also we want to copy this function right here and paste them because we still need to implement those function so there will still be virtual function because we want to be want to make sure that whenever we call a game object uh, whenever we call the draw function from a, from a game object we want the draw function from that class to be called because if you don't use this virtual 
then you probably call the function from the software class. That's why you need the virtual function. Now we will implement those those functions. But now let's go ahead to our CPP file and now we want to add our implementation. So we say okay. So we have the constructor right here. And so what we want to do right now is to make an animation and for that we need something that will draw things on the screen. Remember our texture manager, so we need to include it. Texture manager. So now our texture manager right now has a function called draw. So if we switch over to the texture manager, you will see we have this draw function right here. So this draw function was created to draw static image. So this wasn't for frame actually. But in order for us to make animation, we need things like frames because yeah, we want to draw an image in a specific time and we want to have a speed in between and all that kind of stuff. That's why we need another function in the texture manager called draw frame. So what we're basically are going to do is we're going to be animating a sprite sheet. So let me show you, for example. <clears throat> so we have like this image right here, this sprite sheet. We have more than one frame, we have six frames. And we want like after every second, for example, draw a new image on the screen so that it will give the effect of animating um, the object. So and that's the idea behind this. And for that, we need a function that will be able to take the specific frame right here and draw it on the screen. That's why we need this draw frame function. Now, um, the draw frame function it's actually not so different from the draw function because it has only two parameters more the row and the frame the row stands for the row on the sprite sheet now actually this sprite sheet on the screen right here has only one row but it sometimes happens that you have sprite sheet with many rows and you know and you want to draw a specific image on that sprite sheet then you need to know at which row you should move and which frame you should draw. That's why we have the row and the frame. Now the definition of this function is not so different from the draw or so. It's quite uh, similar. But the difference is now the south rectangle, I mean we select now a, 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 this specific part of the image which we want to draw on the screen. That's why we give the number of the frame. So if we have the frame number one the row in this case we have only one row this is row uh, number zero let's say one because we will start like we don't start like the computer so we say the frame zero then when we have frame one for example we take the width and it starts from here so here then we take this first frame and then we draw it on the screen that's the idea behind this it's not so different from this one on the top so we have this function so you probably don't have it now, so you can simply pause the video and just write it, this code right here. Now let's go back to our warrior class. Now I've been talking about some things like the animation speed and the, 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 the number of frames of the animation. We need to tell the computer exactly how many frames he should animate and yeah, which frame it should be showing on the screen. So we need those variables, we need those to be defined. So. Um, we're going to be creating a class for animation later, but for now, we're just going to be doing it like this. So, we create a row, frame, and we also want to know how many frames are going to be drawn for this animation. So, frame count. So, we have these three variables. Now, let's say we have to initialize those variables. Uh, we need to make an animation for you know for our player idling so um, we have this idle that I've been showing you here right here so it has six frames so we're gonna be initializing frame count is equal to six and also the row is gonna be equal to zero because we start from zero and we move on so it's gonna be zero but you can still go ahead and you know put like row minus one right here and then you'll be able to put one over there that's also how we can so if I put row minus one here then I can simply go here and say row one 
So that's the same thing. So let's keep it like that because just we just want to do it like that. Now we have this. <coughs> Uh, the draw function is the guy who will draw our player on the screen. So we can call our texture manager draw frame. So draw frame. And now it needs an ID, the texture ID. So if you remember, we've created this game object with a texture ID. I think so. Make sure we had that. Because all game objects have texture ID. I have yeah we have it right here it was a string so since we inherit from this we can still use that texture ID right here so we also have this um, the X so it's the transform so we have the transform that we also added in the previous video I don't know how this thing is not auto completing but transform in X from X and Oh no, I should say M. Transform Y. Now the width and the height, we also had them defined in the game object. Now the row and the frame, we just pass our row and our frame. And we don't want to flip it right now, we'll leave the default value. Now, let me move this a little bit down here. Now, we need to update the frame according to the animation speed. So, we need, like, uh, we didn't define the animation speed, so let's go ahead and define it. Animation speed. So in the warrior, you need to define the animation speed. So you know the time that will take between two frames to be drawn on the screen. That's something like that. So we need to update the the, the frame that has to be drawn on the screen. So SDL actually gives us a function called uh, SDL get tick, which is usual because we can actually use that to get our uh, the time since SDL was initialized, and we can use that to calculate the actual value of the frame. But for that, we need to include SDL. So the way we can do that is like this. So give me a second to find it out. Now this is how we do it. We say frame is equal to SDL get tick get tick we divide it by the speed I mean speed and to make sure we never go over the number of frames that we have we need to always make sure that if we get to the number of frames then we start by z we start to zero so frame count so if the rest of the division of that with the number of, 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 of frame is equal to zero, then that means we, we were in the last frame. So we restart by frame zero and so go on. And we can simply render them on the screen using this. Now we can also call the texture clean function here to clean this texture. So we can say get instance, uh, get instance clean. Now here, we didn't get the instance, so that's why it was messing around with me. Get instance and then draw frame. Now let's go ahead in our game engine class and there we will load our sprite sheet and draw it on the screen. We hope that it will work. But for now we need to include our we need to include our warrior. And we create an object. So we say warrior right here. It's a pointer. So we say player. Say it's equal to no pointer. So and we come here and we simply define it. So we can load our image right here. I think the name of my image is idle. So um, you will find uh, this image and the whole source code of this project in the link in the description below. So now I'm just gonna. Add this name right here. 
also going to say player the ID of texture manager. Now we've loaded and we need to draw it on the screen. So we, we're not going to be using this draw function anymore. We just call the warrior draw function. We'll say player draw and it should normally handle any, everything alone. So let's compile it and check if everything's what ah we didn't create our object so let's say we create our object so we load the texture we say warrior is equal to new oh i didn't say warrior player player is equal to new warrior so we need to define the props so say new properties and we need to pass our properties later. So the position, let's say, the texture first of all is going to be player, the texture ID, which we've already loaded. The position, let's say, 100 by 200, something like that. Now the width, I need to check this out. I'm not sure about this. So the width. Now the width, oh, sorry, I didn't, I messed up something right here. Let me go back. So the width should be yeah the width should be 136 and the height should be 96 so I think that should be the good value of that so let me try to compile this and see if anything is wrong compile this so we have some issue right here let me check so I had some issue because I forgot to put the pointer right here in the constructor of warrior and characters. So it was crazy for mine. So that's why it didn't work. So um, let's move on right now. So one thing we also need to initialize here is this, the animation speed. We need the speed. Let's, let's go for 80 for now. Now if I switch back to my engine. Um, we've initialized our player, so we, we use this texture right here. This is the position and this is the width and the height. Now we've called our draw function right here, but we still need to call the update function so that it could calculate the new frame to draw on the screen according to the speed that we've given. So we can simply say player update. So it actually takes the delta time, but for now, I'll just write zero there because we don't we're not using it right now. So if I run it, ah, there it is. We have the animation. I hope you guys can see this correctly. So the player can now be animated. So let me increase the speed, or actually decrease the speed between two frames, so that it could be a little bit faster. So. I compile this and you see it also move faster so that's it for this video guys thank you for watching videos on medical channel um, think about to support me on patreon and uh, leave a comment in the description in, if you have any question or concern and if it didn't work for you you still have the source code in the description below just go out and check that out and if you have a better way of dealing with this so just share with me but as I said, we're going to be creating an animation class which is going to handle this. We won't have to, you know, deal with this for each object. We'll create an animation class. We will handle this animation for all kind of objects that we would like to have animation. So thank you guys. And ciao.